Welcome to the next one, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to drill out your factory metering block so that way you can add adjustable idle feed restrictors and power valve restrictor channels. As you guys can see here, I've just got a standard metering block similar to any other Holly out there on the market today. And we are looking at the power valve restrictor channels, which go right under the power valve. So if we grab a power valve and overlay it in the place where it's supposed to be, you're going to see that right below that you have these two little holes. Those are the power valve restrictor channels. What those do is they limit the amount of fuel and they meter it into the main circuit whenever the power valve opens. So your power valves are calibrated to a specific vacuum. Once the vacuum drops uh, below that amount, these will open and then you'll add the extra amount of fuel. The purpose of this is to add fuel whenever you are under load. Maybe you're trying to go up a hill. Maybe you're trying to get on the freeway. Maybe you're trying to pass a car. In all of those situations, that's when the power valve will come in. The purpose of changing out the power valve restrictor channels is sometimes you're not fueling enough and then sometimes you're over fueling whenever the power valve opens. And in order to remedy that, you guys are going to have to add adjustable orifices onto these metering blocks. The idle feed restrictors, on the other hand, those actually feed your transition and idle circuit. So, so typically when somebody thinks about adjusting the idle, they think about adjusting these little idle screws right here. And yeah, this will feed your idle mixture when the throttle is basically closed, but the idle feed restrictor channels feed both the idle circuit and the transition circuit. So when you're thinking off idle performance, like you're getting off of a stop sign or you're in like cruise, whether you're overfueling or underfueling depends entirely on the idle feed restrictor channels. When we're talking about response rate, maybe, maybe the air fuel ratio is correct on the idle feed restrictor, but you are still leaning out for just a split second before the rest of the fuel starts flowing. That's when you need to work this in conjunction for your low speed air bleeds and then increase the size of the low speed air bleeds, but at the same time increase the size of the idle feed restrictor channel so you can get more fuel flowing faster and you don't have that lean spot off idle. I know this doesn't really need to be said, but if the orifice size that's already in the metering block is smaller than the orifice size you need, for example, if the power valve restrictor channels measure at 30 and you want them to be at 35, then you're going to just drill them out at 35 and call it done. You don't need to add the adjustable plugs in order to get them to 35. But sometimes when you have like larger carburetors, their orifices tend to be a lot bigger. Especially if you put a larger carburetor on a small engine, the orifices seem to be out of whack and you're gonna to want to dial that back yourself. In which case, you're gonna go ahead and drill these out to the sizes that we went through today and then put in the plug so you can get that back down. And that's really the best way to get a large carburetor working on a smaller engine so you can have the fuel metered the way it needs to while not restricting any kind of airflow. Anyway, now I'm gonna be showing you guys how to drill this out and it's actually very simple. You're gonna need two tools. One is a 1 8 drill bit which comes in basically any uh, drill bit set. And the second thing you're gonna need is a 632 tap. This is a little Chinese one that I picked up at Harbor Freight and both of these work fine. This is from a little Milwaukee set. We're gonna be drilling through aluminum, so you don't need any kind of high-end drill bit to actually get this done. Ideally, you're gonna want something a little bit smaller than 1 8 when you're using a hand drill because of the motion and the movement that you're creating while you're drilling it in yourself. It tends to make the hole a little bit bigger and the threads end up a little bit loose. So you're gonna want something a little bit smaller than 1 8 but if you need this like right away, as long as you're careful and you don't move the drill bit as you're going, you can actually get this done done. So the last thing you're going to need is a drill. So this is just a regular Bauer drill uh, with an adjustable chuck. And we're going to go ahead and put the drill bit in here nice and tight. And we're going to start with the idle feed restrictor channels first. So these actually get drilled straight down. Most of these have a little cap halfway down, a little brass cap that you have to drill out first where you before you can actually go in. We're gonna go in about a quarter of an inch first to see where we're at, and then we'll move up from there. See, that was pretty straightforward. So I drilled out the little brass cap in here. You're gonna see that I only went, so if we stick this pick in, you're gonna be able to see that I went in about half of an inch, so a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. Uh, and that's because I know exactly where to stop. If you go too far, you're gonna drill to the other side where you have this main well right here, and you're gonna end up causing a lot of damage. So you wanna go in a quarter inch at a time. Uh, you only need just enough to get rid of the brass plug that's in here, no more than that. So let's go ahead and do the other side. 
and there we go. These are both good to go now. So the next step is to drill out the power valve restrictor channels. These are a little bit tricky and you're gonna to wanna to go a little bit slower on the first one so you figure out exactly the angle that you have to be. Unlike the idle feed restrictors, you're not gonna be drilling straight up and down. You're gonna be drilling at an angle and that's because these channels actually feed the main circuit right here. So these two are tied together through this main well that's right here. So you're going to need to actually go through and figure out where you're supposed to be. Okay, that's about an eighth of an inch. So the secret to drilling out the power valve restrictor channel is that you're actually gonna have to hit this at a 45 degree angle relative to the face of the metering block. So you're gonna want to put the tip of the drill bit right against the hole that's already there. And then you're gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle and just start going at it. After you initially start, you can go ahead and check. And if you've got a perfect circle around the orifice of the power valve restrictor channel, then you know you're going pretty straight. So let's go ahead and keep going. So we used our drill bit to drill all the way through to the main well and reach the other side. And the reason for that is because unlike the idle feed restrictor channels, the power valve restrictor channels actually have a cast hole full of aluminum all the way to the end. And the only way you're actually going to be able to get rid of the entire restriction is if you drill all the way through. Once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and switch out to a different drill bit. This is actually a tap. This is a 632 tap, not 630 seconds because 630 seconds is a fraction. 6-32 is the tap that we're gonna use for this. And we're really just going to drill it just like if it was a drill bit and we're gonna run it all the way through about halfway down. And the reason you don't wanna go all the way down, you only wanna get about five, maybe six threads in there is because you want something for the restrictors to actually stop at. If you just run it all the way down, you're gonna be screwing it all the way down. There's gonna be nowhere for it to stop. You're only gonna want a couple, the first two are usually kind of messed up as you're going in there because you gotta find your way and center itself. And then the next three or four are where the actual thing is going to sit. We're going to actually drill or tap all four of these holes right now. Same exact way, the two idle feed restrictor channels, we're gonna drill them uh, top to bottom, and then we're going to drill these other two at a 45. So really, you just go in and you line it up, you find the right one, and then you just go ahead and drill it. Just count them. You want, you're gonna wanna go about five all the way in, and then you're gonna, you're gonna wanna do the same thing to the other side. And as you guys can see here, we went ahead and threaded all the holes successfully. It's pretty straightforward. You can use a hand tool with the tap such as this, but the problem with using this on the power valve restrictor channels is that if your bit isn't long enough, you're going to be impacting somewhere along the metering block and then you're not gonna be able to turn it. So I've learned to use a drill to actually get this done. You wanna be able to have a very steady hand when you do this because because you don't wanna oversize these holes. I mentioned earlier that the correct drill bit to use is a 1 8, but in reality you wanna use something a hair smaller so that way the hole is nice and tight for when you actually tap out the threads. So now we're going to test out these threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out uh, my box here that has all these different uh, types of inserts. So we're just going to take any one of the random inserts. The orifice doesn't matter for right now. Sometimes when you buy the brass inserts online, it'll come with the correct hex key. But if they don't, you're going to have to source out the one that you need. This particular one came in a standard SAE kit that you can buy. It's like five bucks or whatever. But you're probably going to want to buy a few of these because you'll either lose them or they'll wear out over time. So if we'll just go ahead and bring this up to the idle feed restrictor and try to thread it in. And we are golden and it's going about halfway down and it is stopped. So if you guys look here, you're gonna want this idle feed restrictor to be just a hair below this other orifice that's right here. You don't want the edge covering that up at all because you want a nice clean stream of fuel flow and you're gonna want this as deep as you can without blocking it on the bottom. So I'm trying to get this thing as deep as I can without getting it up. Oh, I'm already stopped 100%. And as you guys can see, I've got a clear path between here and here. So I have no restriction in fuel flow and I keep this running uh, as good as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another plug and we're going to run this in here as well. 
These plugs are actually brass. If you try to use the ones uh, made out of steel, you can. The only issue with those ones is that they're really hard to drill out versus the brass ones that are super easy to drill out. So if you're using them as a block off, you can go ahead and use the steel ones. But if you're using them to drill out for different sizes, you're, you're going to want to use the brass ones because they're much easier to use. So we have that idle feed restrictor in. We're going to go ahead and plug the power valve restrictor channels and get those in there. So you're going to want the inserts for the power valve restrictor channels just below the surface. And the reason for that is that you don't want them to come into contact with the power valve. The power valve feeds the flow through these little holes right here. And if they are protruding over the top, you're going to get a restriction in fuel flow. You're going to want them just under the surface. Another thing you're going to notice is that when you're drilling out these holes, you're going to get like this little crust layer of aluminum up here on top and you're going to want to get rid of that for the same reason and not only that sometimes you tend to push out the top thread a little bit and you're going to need to file that down you can do that by using a dremel or you can file this down using just a small file or sandpaper if you're careful as long as you don't damage the sealing surface and you can get this smooth and the power valve still goes in without a hitch you shouldn't have any problems if you can still thread in the power valve by hand then that means the threads are still in good shape. But if it's difficult like this one, you're going to need to fix them up before you can actually get this installed. You don't want this thing jamming up and getting broken inside of your metering block. That's just gonna cause a lot of problems. So overall, the process is really easy, really cheap, really affordable. Once you have all the tools and the plugs, you can go ahead and do any number of metering blocks and do it over and over and over again. That way you guys can dial in your tunes whenever you want to go ahead and do a custom build for a particular engine. You already have the tools and the knowledge to get this thing done. Anyway, that's about it. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.